The Beatitudes are eight blessings recounted by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. Each is a proverb-like proclamation, without narrative. Four of the blessings also appear in the Sermon on the Plain in the Gospel of Luke, followed by four woes which mirror the blessings. In the Vulgate, each of these blessings begins with the word beati, which translates to happy, rich, or blessed, plural adjective. The corresponding word in the original Greek is makarioi, with the same meanings. Thus, blessed are the poor in spirit appears in Latin as beati pauper spiritu. The Latin noun beatitudo was coined by Cicero to describe a state of blessedness, and was later incorporated within the chapter headings written for Matthew chapter 5 in various printed versions of the Vulgate. Subsequently, the word was anglicized to beatitudes in the Great Bible of 1540, and has, over time, taken on a preferred spelling of beatitudes. Each beatitude consists of two phrases, the condition and the result. In almost every case the condition is from familiar Old Testament context, but Jesus teaches a new interpretation. Together, the Beatitudes present a new set of Christian ideals that focus on a spirit of love and humility different in orientation than the usual force and exaction taken. They echo the ideals of the teachings of Jesus on mercy, spirituality, and compassion. <laughs> Biblical basis Topic. While opinions may vary as to exactly how many distinct statements into which the Beatitudes should be divided ranging from eight to ten, most scholars consider them to be only eight. These eight of Matthew follow a simple pattern, Jesus names a group of people normally thought to be unfortunate and pronounces them blessed. Topic. Matthew Topic. The eight Beatitudes in Matthew the ninth beatitude, Matthew chapter 5 verses 11 to 12, refers to the bearing of reviling and is addressed to the disciples. RT France considers verses 11 and 12 to be based on Isaiah chapter 51 verse 7. The beatitudes unique to Matthew are the meek, the merciful, the pure of heart, and the peacemakers. The other four have similar entries in Luke but are followed almost immediately by four woes. The term poor in spirit is unique to Matthew. Luke The four Beatitudes in Luke 6 verses 20–22 are set within the Sermon on the Plain. Luke 6 verse 23, "...rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets," appears to parallel the text in Matthew 5 verses 11–12. The four woes that follow in Luke chapter 6 verses 24 to 26. These woes are distinct from the seven woes of the Pharisees which appear later in Luke chapter 11 verses 37 to 54. Topic: <laughs> Analysis and interpretation. Topic: Each beatitude consists of two phrases, the condition and the result. In almost all cases the phrases used are familiar from an Old Testament context, but in the Sermon on the Mount Jesus elevates them to new levels and teachings. Together, the Beatitudes present a new set of ideals that focus on love and humility rather than force and exaction. They echo the highest ideals of Jesus' teachings on spirituality and compassion. The term, the meek, would be familiar in the Old Testament, e.g., as in Psalm 37 verse 11. Although the beatitude concerning the meek has been much praised even by some non-Christians such as Mahatma Gandhi, some view the admonition to meekness skeptically. Friedrich Nietzsche in On the Genealogy of Morals considered the verse to be embodying what he perceived as a slave morality. In Christian teachings, the works of mercy, which have corporal and spiritual components, have resonated with the theme of the beatitude for mercy. These teachings emphasize that these acts of mercy provide both temporal and spiritual benefits. The theme of mercy has continued in devotions such as the divine mercy in the 20th century. The term peacemakers has traditionally been interpreted to mean not only those who live in peace with others, but also those who do their best to promote friendship among mankind and between God and man. Saint Gregory of Nyssa interpreted it as godly work, which was an imitation of God's love of man. John Wesley said the peacemakers 
endeavor to calm the stormy spirits of men, to quiet their turbulent passions, to soften the minds of contending parties, and, if possible, reconcile them to each other. They use all innocent arts, and employ all their strength, all the talents which God has given them, as well to preserve peace where it is, as to restore it where it is not. The phrase, poor in spirit, tachoi toi numati in Matthew 5, verse 3, has been subject to a variety of interpretations. A. W. Tozer describes poverty of spirit as, an inward state paralleling the outward circumstances of the common beggar in the streets. These blessed poor are no longer slaves to the tyranny of things. They have broken the yoke of the oppressor, and this they have done not by fighting but by surrendering. Though free from all sense of possessing, they yet possess all things. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven." William Burnett Wright, seeking to avoid a common misunderstanding of the meaning of poverty of spirit, distinguishes those who are "...poor in spirit," from those he calls "...poor-spirited," who "...consider crawling the Christian's proper gate." There are men who fear to call their souls their own, and if they did, they would deceive themselves. At times such men baptize their cowardice in holy water, name it humility, and tremble. They are not blessed. Their life is a creeping paralysis. Afraid to stand for their convictions, they end by having no convictions to stand to. Dallas Willard, most notably, in the fourth chapter of his The Divine Conspiracy, Rediscovering Our Hidden Life in God has proposed that the Beatitudes are not virtues or meritorious conditions. Rather, they are proclamations that the people before Jesus on the mountain are blessed well off because they are disciples of Jesus Christ. These proclamations are instructive in that they communicate to the hearers that many who are in a deplorable condition are blessed in spite of this because the kingdom of heaven has been opened even to them by Jesus Christ. Alfred Edersheim held a similar or identical view. He is quoted by Willard as saying, It is not because a man is poor in spirit that his is the kingdom of heaven, in the sense that one state will grow into the other, or be its result, still less is the one the reward of the other. The connecting link is in each case Christ himself, because he has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. This interpretation relies on a view of Jesus. Main message being the availability of the kingdom of heaven see Mount 4 the Beatitudes then, are, according to Willard, proof that, in Jesus, the rule of God from the heavens truly is available in life circumstances that are beyond all human hope. This interpretation sees the Beatitudes as continuing a biblical theme of status inversion in such places as the Song of Moses and Miriam in Exodus chapter 15, the prayer of Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 2, the story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17, Jehoshaphat's prayer and battle in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and the Magnificat of the Virgin Mary in Luke chapter 1. Also, Psalm chapter 34, 37, and 107. Again, the inversion occurs, not because of a meritorious condition but in spite of it and by God's salvific initiative. In other religious texts in the Book of Mormon, a religious text of Mormonism, Jesus gives a sermon to a group of indigenous Americans including statements very similar to Matthew 6 and evidently derived therefrom Yea, blessed are the poor in spirit, who come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven 3 Nephi 12 and blessed are all they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled with the Holy Ghost 3 Nephi 12 the Baha'i Law i Akdas contains the statement, Blessed the soul that hath been raised to life through my quickening breath and hath gained admittance into my heavenly kingdom. The Qur. and quotes the Bible only in Q. 21-105 which resembles Psalm 25 verse 13 referred to in Matthew 5 verse 5, but the Qur. and uses righteous rather than meek. The Quran e Say the word of humility and enter the gate of paradise. And some hadith, e.g., My mercy exceeds my anger, contain some passages with somewhat similar tone, but distinct phraseology, from the Beatitudes, the Bhagavad Gita, and the traditional writings of Buddhism, e.g., some of the Mangala Sutta, have been interpreted as including teachings whose intentions resemble some of the messages of Beatitudes, e.g., humility and absence of ego, although their wording is not the same. Six. 
modern beatitudes were proposed by Pope Francis during his visit to Malmö, Sweden on All Saints Day 2016. Blessed are those who remain faithful while enduring evils inflicted on them by others and forgive them from their heart. Blessed are those who look into the eyes of the abandoned and marginalized and show them their closeness. Blessed are those who see God in every person and strive to make others also discover him. Blessed are those who protect and care for our common home. Blessed are those who renounce their own comfort in order to help others. Blessed are those who pray and work for full communion between Christians. See also Topic Community of the Beatitudes Divine Mercy Life of Jesus in the New Testament Mount of Beatitudes Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Easwaran Eknath Original Goodness on Beatitudes. Nilgiri Press, 1989. ISBN 0-915132-91-5. Kissinger, Warren S. The Sermon on the Mount, A History of Interpretation and Bibliography. Matuchin, Scarecrow Press, 1975. Twami, M. W. The Beatitudes. A Dictionary of Biblical Tradition in English Literature. David Lyle Jeffrey, General Editor. Grand Rapids, W. B. Eerdmans, 1992. Topic: External links. Topic: Catholic Encyclopedia, The Eight Beatitudes, New Advent. The Beatitudes Society.